Today, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Accenture PLC, ticker symbol ACN. So we're using the Select 6 analysis to take a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics in order to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Accenture based off of their business fundamentals. Accenture is currently trading for exactly $250 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is down about 22%. This is underperforming the S&P 500 over this period. Over the last five years, Accenture is compounding their stock price at a rate of about 10% annually. Over the last 10 years, Accenture stock price is compounding at 13% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, Accenture stock price is compounding at a rate of just under 14% annually. So they've been doing this over the past 18 years. Accenture also pays out a dividend yield, and their average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to these compounded annual returns. Currently, Accenture has a 1.67% dividend yield, so that's about in line with the S&P 500. Accenture is trading for only $7 above their 52-week low. The business is down more than $90 from their 52-week high. Accenture is a very large business. They have a $147 billion market cap. For more background about the business, Accenture is a leading global IT services firm that provides consulting, strategy, and technology and operational services. These services run the gambit from aiding enterprises with digital transformation to procurement services to software system integration. The company provides its IT offerings to a variety of sectors, including communications, media and technology, financial services, health and public services, consumer products, and resources. Accenture employs just under 500 thousand people throughout more than 20 cities in over 51 countries. The company was founded in 1951 and is based in Dublin, Ireland. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two major reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Accenture has earned very high returns on capital in all five of these years, even though they have declined over this time frame. The company had their lows on return on capital in 2020. Since then, they have been increasing. In their most recent fiscal year, Accenture's return on capital was 35%. And averaged out over this time frame, Accenture is earning about 39% average returns on capital in a given year. Those returns are more than five times better than that of a typical business and more than two and a half times the benchmark we're looking for. And so this is a very strong check here on metric number one for Accenture. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these will be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. Throughout this time frame, Accenture has had strong revenue growth. They've increased their revenues by 52%. Their net incomes have increased by 74% and their free cash flows have grown by 64%. So with their net incomes and their free cash flows growing faster than their revenues, Accenture has improved their margins over this period. And with all three of these being up, this is a check here on metric number two. Then for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in Accenture by looking at the business on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the past five years. We just learned that Accenture has grown their earnings by 74% over this period, but earnings are just one part of this earnings per share equation. So we also want to look at what they've done in terms of their shares out standing and Accenture has bought back a small modest amount of their shares. They've repurchased around 2% of their shares outstanding during this time frame. So with these slight share buybacks and this strong earnings growth, this is strong earnings per share growth here for Accenture. The business has earned $11.01 for each share that they have outstanding over their last 12 months. And this is our third check in a row. Then for metric number four, we're looking for something similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years for Accenture. 
very similar, very similar to their free, very similar story to their earnings per share. We learned that Accenture has grown their free cash flows and they've had these slight share buybacks. So this is strong free cash flow per share growth for the company. Over their last 12 months, Accenture has produced $14.03 for each share that they've had outstanding. And this is another check here on metric number four, meaning that so far we are a perfect four for four through our first four metrics. There's still one vital piece missing of what we've covered so far. So you might think that nailing above average returns on capital and having strong growth in their business is the key to being a wonderful business. But we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets truly wonderful businesses apart, which is having those characteristics without using a lot of debt. So for metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that Accenture has produced over their last five years. And this is because we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So Accenture has had negative net debt in all five of these years, meaning that after paying off all of their debt, the company is actually left over with this cash cushion on their balance sheet. Accenture has reduced their net debt position for their most recent fiscal year until today. So currently the business has about $2.6 billion of cash left over after paying off their debt. And Accenture has been strongly cash flow generative in all five of these years, growing their cash flows throughout, meaning that this is a strong check here on metric number five. Over the past five years, Accenture has produced $28.7 billion worth of free cash flow. And over their last 12 months, the business has produced about $8.9 billion worth of free cash flow. So Accenture looks like it is strongly cash flow generative and has this strong cash cushion. With another check here on metric number five, we're still perfect. And so we want to find out if Accenture has what it takes to go a perfect six for six on our select six analysis. Then our sixth metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may provide us with a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Accenture. We learned that Accenture has produced $28.7 billion worth of free cash flow over their past five years, meaning that in an average year, Accenture produces about $5.7 billion worth of free cash flow, and currently Accenture has a $155.5 billion total enterprise value value. So we're using their enterprise value because it takes into account both the company's market cap and their net debt position. And it'll give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Accenture were a private company. So when we divide their $5.7 billion of their average free cash flow by their $155.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us just over a 3.6% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. That's about in line with the yield of the 10-year treasury, although that's not giving us that risk premium we'd be looking for. Worth keeping in mind, is that Accenture has quite dramatically grown their free cash flows, especially over their last 12 months. So the business has produced $8.9 billion worth of free cash flow over their last 12 months. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $8.9 billion of their last 12 months worth of free cash flow by their $155.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us just over a 5.7% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Accenture. So that would be above that risk premium we'd ideally be seeking on a current basis of the business. However, because their average free cash flows are coming in here just at the yield of the 10-year treasury, this is going to be an X still on metric number six. But it's interesting that on a current and an average basis, this is split here for Accenture. We've got one bonus metric to cover, and then we'll want to perform a discounted cash flow analysis to come to a more concrete potential intrinsic value for Accenture. Keep in mind that this is not financial advice, and this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. While these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. For our bonus, here we're taking a look at Accenture's dividend profile. So Accenture currently pays out a 1.67% dividend yield, which is about in line with the yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF. However, we still want to look at the business to see whether their dividends are healthy and supported by their free cash flows because of the type of business that Accenture is. And in all five of these years, not only has Accenture grown their dividend payouts, they've also grown their free cash flows, and they've very healthily and very easily supported their dividend payouts throughout. Accenture has maintained a very modest dividend payout ratio. And it would seem like even though this is a snapshot of their past five years of performance and it's no guarantee for the future, that Accenture's dividends look like they are very healthy and well-supported, potentially making them very sustainable into the future. 
then as promised, everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Accenture, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Accenture. So a discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a business's free cash flows. It's just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with Accenture's current free cash flows, and we're using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown these free cash flows since Accenture became a publicly listed business in 2001. So over this time, Accenture has grown their free cash flows at a rate of about 12% annually. If we assume that Accenture is able to keep up this growth over their next 10 years, and then during the 10 years out after that, that this growth rate would be cut in half and Accenture would grow their free cash flows at a rate of 6% annually, then adding in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an approximation of the company's tangible net worth per share. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return from Accenture, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments in addition to his margin of safety requirements, then at today's valuations of the business, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for Accenture is right around $201 per share. So that's down about $49 from what the company's current stock price is. There are some factors you'll want to keep in mind here. One is that we would not be doubly counting their dividends. So their dividend yield of 1.67% would be included in this 15% rate of return. Another thing is that Accenture has tended to have very high business predictability in its past. And while this may be the case for the business going forward, that's not necessarily a guarantee. So please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about our final rating for Accenture, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business? Starting with some of the key points to support a potential long thesis of Accenture, number one, Accenture's mixed shift away from more commoditized offerings should boost profitability. Number two, Accenture will rely more on automation to handle some of its business process outsourcing, allowing for margin expansion. And number three, Accenture will likely increase wallet share with its enterprise customers as the technology landscape becomes increasingly complex. Then for some of the key points supporting a potential short thesis of the company, Number one, as Accenture navigates away from some business process outsourcing services more subject to commoditization, clients may become more familiar with other consultancies they employ as outsourcers, potentially resulting in replacements of Accenture consulting projects. Number two, the move to off-premises workloads leads to new competition in the form of cloud service providers that could limit Accenture's growth opportunities. And number three, reputation is a key driver of Accenture's moat. If a large scandal were to occur, including a data breach or privacy invasion, the firm's reputation could suffer. Related to that, it's worth noting that Accenture's start was as the consulting branch of Arthur Anderson, which was one of the big five American accounting firms that famously collapsed due to its questionable accounting practices for energy companies Enron and telecommunications company WorldCom, which were revealed as huge scandals that resulted in the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. So with that balanced perspective of Accenture's qualitative aspects, now it's time for a rating of the business. So with Accenture checking the box on five of our six metrics, it looks like Accenture is a very strong candidate in terms of its attractiveness for further research. The company earned significantly above average returns on capital in the high 30s. They've grown their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows over the past five years and bought back a small amount of their shares. The company has a cash cushion on their balance sheet and is strongly cash flow generative. Their average free cash flow to enterprise value yields were split on either side of that slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Accenture's dividends look like they were healthy and growing and well supported by their free cash flows in all five of these years. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Accenture, if you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions will be accurate for the business going forward. At today's valuations, if you are seeking a 15% rate of return from Accenture, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for the business is around $201 per share. So Accenture last traded near those levels in spring of 2020. It's worth reiterating, however, that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. Instead, this analysis serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Accenture. So with that said, we performed a fundamental analysis of Accenture PLC, ticker symbol ACN, which we looked at today because it's near its 52-week lows and it's consistently outperformed the S&P 500 over the past 20 years or so. With Accenture checking the box on five of our six metrics, it looks like they're a very strong candidate for research. 
And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Accenture with me, and have a great day.